Leviticus chapter 14 ends with this descriptive summary. These are the instructions for dealing with serious skin diseases, including scabby sores and mildew, whether on clothing or in a house, and a swelling on the skin, a rash or discolored skin. This procedure will determine whether a person or object is ceremonially clean or unclean. These are the instructions regarding skin diseases and mildew. And with that vivid description, it's safe to say that today's reading will be a little gnarly at best. But let's look past the leprosy and the mildew and see what God is saying about healing and cleansing in our lives today. First, notice that the steps given beginning in verse 2 are not to heal a leper, but to ritually cleanse a leper who's already been healed. See, healing is God's thing. It's the sovereign act of God that takes place inside a believer's body. But the cleansing that followed, what's described through most of this chapter, was an outward expression following the healing, so the person would understand God's process. See, God heals us on the inside, but He wants the healing to be seen outwardly through the cleansing of our life and actions. That's the picture for you and I today. In the Old Testament, blood was always the basis for healing and cleansing. God never healed, never blessed, never dealt with evil apart from the shedding of blood. And for us, the blood is always a picture of the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus' death was the death of our old nature. It laid to rest our old life. That's what's constantly being pictured for us through the Levitical sacrifices. The good news for you and I today is that Jesus is our healer. Through his stripes, the Bible says, we are healed. And by his blood, we are cleansed from all of our sin and restored into a right relationship with God. So try not to get too hung up on the scabby sores and the grotesque skin diseases today. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who heals all of our diseases and replaces our sin with his righteousness.